Having severe pain with your period to the point that you cannot function is not normal. I hear this so often and it drives me crazy because people are suffering for years because of it. Hey, this is Dr. Karen Tang. I'm a board certified gynecologist and a minimally invasive surgeon. And today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite topics, something that so many people have and almost no one talks about, endometriosis. This is a topic I get a little heated about because I feel so strongly about it and there are so many things wrong with how it's usually managed. So I may go on three or four rants about it during this video. I'm gonna try not to let my outrage get too out of control, but it may pop out a little bit. If you're new to my channel, I use this platform to talk about things like period health, sex ed, reproductive health, things that are kind of taboo, but I think that everyone should know about. So hit like and subscribe and all the stuff you're supposed to do on YouTube and let's talk about these issues. So endometriosis is something you may have heard of on the news or in social media recently because a couple of celebrities have talked about having surgery for endometriosis. Chrissy Teigen, Halsey, Olivia Culpo, Lena Dunham. If it seems like every few weeks or months a celebrity is talking about having had surgery for endometriosis or suffered with endometriosis, it's simply because it's very common. We think that up to one in 10 uh, women or girls has endometriosis. And I'll even say those who are assigned female at birth because it does affect transgender or gender non-conforming patients. Endometriosis is even more common among people who have crossed chronic pelvic pain and people with infertility. And so among women with chronic pelvic pain, up to 70% will have endometriosis and with women who have infertility, up to 50%. So in this video, we'll be covering a bunch of stuff. What is endometriosis? Where does it grow? What symptoms does it cause? So what are some things you might be experiencing that could be signs you could have endometriosis? How do we diagnose it? And how do you get care for it? So most important is actually probably at the end of the video where we talk about, so if you think that you might have endometriosis, what do you do? Where do you go for help? Stay tuned because I'll cover five common symptoms of endometriosis that you would never think were actually from a GYN cause. A quick disclaimer, like every other doctor on social media, we have to say that the information in these videos is purely for educational purposes. It's not medical advice and we can't give medical advice in the comments. So the first question is, what is endometriosis? And I'm a very visual learner, so I'm gonna use my trusty whiteboard. Ta-da! This is the high-tech, high-production value that the Karen Tang MD channel gives you, I know. Uh, but this is truly what I use in the office when I talk to patients um, about endometriosis, and so I feel like it really gets the point across. So this is your uterus, or the womb. This is your bladder in front, and this is your rectum behind. And what I'm coloring in now is something called the endometrium, which is the tissue that's in the cavity of your uterus, and that's what comes out like menstrual blood every month. So every month when you have your period, this is the tissue that comes out. So that's called endometrial tissue. So endometriosis is now a condition where something that looks a lot like that endometrial tissue grows outside of the uterus. Common places for it to grow are inside the ovary in the form of a cyst, which fills with fluid that kind of looks like chocolate syrup, so we call it a chocolate cyst, and also between the uterus and the rectum behind. And so that's why a lot of patients with endometriosis will have really bad bowel symptoms that tend to get worse with their periods. You can also get endometriosis on the surface of the bladder or on the walls of the pelvis. So patients with endometriosis can have bladder symptoms, like almost like UTI type symptoms, like burning and urgency and frequency that gets worse with their periods. One of the craziest things about endometriosis, given how common it is, is that we don't know where it comes from. So here's why I get on my soapbox a little bit. Just give me a second. If you had something that affected up to one in 10 men and caused super bad pain, it caused bowel symptoms, it caused bleeding, it caused fertility problems, which we're gonna get into, wouldn't you think that we would know where it came from? Wouldn't you know that we would know exactly the gene or the cause of the pathophysiology? But no, it affects women. And so we have no clue where it comes from. I'm gonna get on that same soapbox when I talk about fibroids because it's the exact same issue. Just a little sneak preview. So I've already started hinting at the types of symptoms that endometriosis can cause. And so in general, they're related to pain. Uh, the endometriosis can cause inflammation, which can inflame nerve fibers, inflame muscles, inflame other organs around it. And so the most common symptom is pelvic pain particularly pain with periods, what we call dysmenorrhea. Patients with endometriosis can also present with infertility or difficulty getting pregnant. What happens is that the fallopian tubes, which are where the egg travels between the ovary to get into the uterus, can become inflamed by endometriosis and therefore scar or get blocked off. It's called tubal factor infertility. I'll probably make a separate video about fertility surgery and endometriosis because I do a lot of that surgery and there's a lot to go into. Uh, I didn't have it in the picture before, but I've drawn it now, is the pelvic floor. So there are muscles in your pelvis, if you picture your pelvis like a bowl, the whole bottom of the bowl is muscle. And so because endometriosis can inflame the muscle too, you can have things like pain with sex as the muscle is sitting around the vagina. You can have problems with bowel movements like constipation if you have spasm of the muscle around your rectum. And it can also cause pain with exercise. So a couple of these are things that people would never think are associated with endometriosis or a GYN issue. This is the Dr. Tang list of surprise symptoms that can be from endometriosis. Number one, 
pain with exercise because of the muscles. Number two, bowel issues. Number three is pain with urination or urinary urgency or frequency. Number four is migraines that get worse with their period. Number five is fatigue that gets worse with your period. Uh, people with endometriosis feel really wiped out, like they have no energy and they just kind of can't even get out of bed. Um, it's not in your head, it's an actual thing. So how do we diagnose endometriosis? This is where I get on my soapbox for the second time, because on average it takes seven years for people to get a diagnosis of endometriosis from start of symptoms to actually finding out that they have it. And what often happens is in the beginning, someone may think, well, it's just probably really bad period cramps. This is probably normal. Even worse is if they see a doctor and the doctor tells them, oh, that's just normal period cramps. That's what everyone goes through. And then the poor person thinks, well, I must be crazy because this is what everyone goes through. Why am I suffering so much? Part of the issue is that the diagnosis is made surgically, meaning it's hard to find it on imaging studies or just based on exam or history. So if you remember the little picture here, most endometriosis is almost like someone took a pen and drew dots on the piece of paper. If you were to take this and run it through an ultrasound or even an MRI, most of the time it's gonna look quote unquote normal. So part of the issue is that someone may come into the doctor, they're gonna get an ultrasound of the pelvis and it's gonna be normal. And that's gonna lead sometimes to people saying, well, everything looks normal, there's nothing wrong. You can't find it on imaging, you actually have to see it with your eyes. And we do that with a surgery called laparoscopic surgery and that's my specialty. It's a minimally invasive type of surgery where we go through small incisions in your abdomen. We fill your abdomen with carbon dioxide gas so we can see and we use a camera projecting to a screen and small instruments to do the surgery. Surgery is only one part of the puzzle. It gets you the diagnosis and it's the main part of treatment, but usually I'm recommending many other approaches to treatment that are used in addition to surgery to help with patient symptoms. Number one, we may offer hormonal medications such as birth control. This is something you may have actually tried before going for surgery because oftentimes birth control will actually improve cramps and bleeding with periods. And so endometriosis is stimulated by the estrogen from your ovaries and most hormonal birth controls will actually suppress the ovaries and decrease estrogen and therefore help with endometriosis pain. So uh, basically every type of uh, hormonal birth control could be used for endometriosis. You can talk with your doctor about the pluses and minuses of each type. Other medications that help suppress the estrogen from the ovaries and help with endometriosis pain, things called Lupron or Oralissa. Uh, full disclosure, I'm on the Speakers Bureau for the company that makes those medications. They do have some potential side effects, including things like hot flashes, bone thinning, mood fluctuations. So again, it's something to talk with your doctor about the risks and the benefits. Um, I tend to use those medications for patients with really, really severe pain um, before surgery, um, or for those who have really severe disease for some suppression after surgery. But again, um, it's all up to the individual. Individual patient. The thing that I also feel very strongly about is the fact that to have the best possible outcomes, you have to have a team approach, meaning that it's just not one gynecologist doing one surgery. You have to involve other specialists who can help with all the different aspects of care. Endometriosis, because again, it inflames the bowels, it inflames the pelvic floor muscles. Um, oftentimes, I'm sending people to see a GI doctor to get a colonoscopy and talk about dietary changes that may help with their bowel symptoms. I'm sending someone to a pelvic physical therapist, which I can probably do an entire video on what is pelvic floor physical therapy because I use it all the time and it's amazing. So everyone with chronic pelvic pain and endometriosis also has mood symptoms, things like depression and anxiety. And what happens is that the mood symptoms tend to worsen the pain and the pain tends to worsen the mood symptoms. And so it becomes this huge snowball where someone you know, feels terrible in terms of their mood, then they have pain so they feel worse and then they have more pain because they're feeling depressed and anxious. And so I tell people that you have to break this cycle as part of the pain management process. So working with a really good a licensed mental health professional, a therapist and or psychiatrist is super important. And I discuss that with all of my patients because I find that it's really, really important to getting the best pain outcomes. So the final and most important thing that I wanted to go over is what do you do and how do you get care if you think you have endometriosis? A lot of people will start with the primary care doctor, a general OBGYN, or even your pediatrician if you're a teenager. And that's great if that gets you the care that you need. But if you're having symptoms that are so bad that you can't function, you can't go to work or school, you're having to take around the clock pain medications to function, or you're not able to do the activities that you love doing because you're in so much pain or having a lot of bowel symptoms or nausea and vomiting, and your doctor tells you that that's normal or that that's what everyone goes through, please see someone else. Dr. Tang's soapbox number three, having severe pain with your periods to the point that you cannot function is not normal. Other healthcare professionals and doctors watching this, please stop telling patients this. I hear this so often and it drives me crazy because people are suffering for years because of it. Okay, and rant. So if you're hearing this from a doctor, please try and find another doctor who perhaps has more experience with endometriosis who will listen to you and take you seriously. How do you do that? 
So my specialty is something called minimally invasive GYN surgery. And what that means is that we do additional training after general OBGYN residency, which is the usual training of four years after medical school to become a specialist in women's health. We do extra training on top of that to become specialists in difficult surgical things like endometriosis and fibroids. And we also learn more about chronic pelvic pain. So most of the time, if you look for a minimally invasive gynecologic or GYN surgeon, most of us are specialized in endometriosis care. And you can look that up on websites. You can find them through aagl.org, which is American Association of Gynecologic Laparoscopists. That's our uh, professional association. You have a search for surgeon feature. And then also there is a Facebook group called Nancy's Nook, which is a support group and also educational resource for patients with endometriosis. If you live near a major medical center that has an OBGYN department, you can look up and see if they have a minimally invasive surgeon on staff. If you live in a more remote area, it may be more difficult and you may have to drive several hours to find a specialist, but I think it's really worth it. Uh, rather than going through the disappointment of seeing multiple, multiple doctors, going directly to someone who might be more likely to be able to help you, I think is really important. This is definitely part of a much bigger social issue we have in the United States about access to healthcare, both in terms of insurance coverage and insurance reimbursement and not having of doctors who are well-trained in this, all of which is kind of tied together with some misogyny. This is sort of soapbox number four. There are definitely so many roadblocks to people getting the care that they need, and I'm really sympathetic to it. I truly we hope that we help to improve some of these inequities in the future. Thank you so much for joining me today and listening to me talk about endometriosis. Please share this video with someone who you think might need to hear it. There are so many people out there who have endometriosis or who have symptoms of endometriosis and who are desperately looking for the information to get the care that they need. And that is my goal is to try and get that information out to everyone who might need to hear it. Hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's any other topics associated that you would like me to talk more about. Thanks again and looking forward to seeing you guys next time.